Hello and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Foundation Week 8 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have sat some quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website. And I have gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions from that quiz. And they're the three questions that you see in front of you now. But they're not just any old three questions. Oh, no, no. These are the three worst answered questions from that quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So first off, can you get each of these questions correct? And that's going to be easier said than done because, as I say, these are questions that students are finding really difficult. Second, um, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then I wonder if you can predict why might students pick these popular wrong answers? Um, so what is the most popular choice of wrong answer? And then why might students pick each of these wrong answers? And then the final challenge, and I think this is the hardest of them all. Imagine you're sat next to somebody who's absolutely convinced that their choice of wrong answer is right. How would you help them? Not only understand that you're right, but in a nice way that they're wrong. So what I suggest you do now is you pause the video, work your way through these three questions, bearing my five challenges in mind, and then when you're ready, press play again, and we'll talk through these together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one. Right, let's go through these, and for a bit of drama, we'll do it in reverse order. So we're going to start with the least worst answered question first, and it is the question question on sequences. So what is the nth term rule for the sequence that starts 4, 9, 14, 19, 24? So nth term rule. So we're looking here for an algebraic rule involving n that's going to allow us to find any term in this sequence. And to help us do that, we've got the first five terms. So we know this is a linear sequence. How do we know it's a linear sequence? Because it goes up by the same amount each time. To get from 4 to 9, you add on 5. To get from 9 to 14, you add on 5. So that's super helpful to begin with. If we know, if we've got a sequence that goes up by the same amount each time, we can use the following technique. Now, there's lots of ways to, uh, to, to find out the term rules of linear sequences. I'll show you the way I use, but if you've been taught another way, as long as you're getting this same right answer and you understand it, you're going to be fine. So if it goes up by fives, what I tend to do is I write the five times table. And the kind of algebraic notation or the code for the five times table is 5n. Uh, one lot of five is five. Two lots of five are 10. Five multiplied by three. Three lots of five are 15. Five multiplied by four, 20. Five multiplied by five, 25. So there is my five times table. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compare my five times table to the sequence that I want to get. It's not so far off, right? Mine goes 5, 10, 15, 20. This goes 4, 9, 14, 19. What do I need to do to get from my five times table to this sequence here? Well, I need to subtract one. And it's worth checking that that works every single time for each term here. Five times table, subtract one, gives me this sequence. So what's my nth term rule? It's 5n, my five times table, and I subtract one off each of the terms. So I'm going for that, which I reckon is answer C. Are we right? Yes, we are. But look at that, only 45% of students got that right. Less than half the students got that correct. The most popular answer is B. Most popular wrong answer is B, M plus 5. Where does M plus 5 come from? Well, this is a really common thing that I see in students. This is a, a real life student explanation from, from my website. The difference between the numbers is 5. And that's absolutely true. You do add on 5 each time, but that isn't the nth term rule. See, the advantage of, of this rule that we've come up with, 5n take 1, is that if I said to you, what is the 100th term in the sequence? You could work it out. You could say five lots of 100 take away one, which is 500 take away one, which is 499. We can do that in about five seconds. Whereas if all you know is it goes up by five each time, you're going to have to write down all these terms, 14, 19, 24, 29. You'll be here all day doing it. Whereas with this nth term rule, this five and take one, we can get to the answer straight away. Okay, so that was the uh, best answered out of those three. What's the second best answered? It is 
bearings. Now, bearings have come up before if you've been with this series since the start. Uh, students always find bearings difficult. Um, let's have a read of this one. What is the bearing of B from A? Now, the order is so, so, so important here. Let me put in my north line. Let me put in A. Let's just get B going on down here. Of B from A. So this has got to be the start. That's super important. And this is the end. That's a really good way to start off these bearings problems. Right where you start, right where you end. Of B from A. Now we've got to know three things about bearings. The first is that they're always measured from north. And that's why we've got our north line there. The second thing is that we always measure them clockwise. Now, it's one thing knowing that, but then you've got to uh, remember which way clockwise is. It's the way the hands on a clock go around, starting from 12, coming around here. And the third thing you need to know about bearings is that you always give your answer using three digits. Okay, so how does that help us? Which angle are we looking for here? So we start at A, we're here, measure north, we go clockwise around until we hit B. So it's this angle. We need to work out this angle. Do we know anything? Well, yeah, we do, because if you look on the diagram, we're told that this bit of the angle there is 40 degrees. So we know that bit's 40. But our answer isn't 40, because we've got to start from north. We've got to get all the way around to this dashed line before we add on our 40. So how far have we gone there from north to this dashed line? Well, that dashed line, notice how it just continues the north line down. That's a straight line, and we know angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So to get from north, Right round to B, we've got to go 180 degrees, and then we've got to add on our extra 40 degrees, and we get 220 degrees. Oh, sorry, 220 degrees. Uh, just a quick check. Is that three digits? Yeah, it is. So that's looking good, and it would help if I'd actually written 220. There you go, 220 degrees. So I think the correct answer to this is D. Let's have a look if we're right. Well, yes, we are, but that is low. Only 38% of students agree with us there. Most popular wrong answer for this, quite interesting this, is A, 140 degrees. Why do students think it's A? Can you see where 140 degrees comes from? Well, if you look at the answer, angles on a straight line add up to 180, correct? If there's an angle of 40, then the rest of the straight line needs to be 140. What's that student done there? It's good maths, but they've measured the wrong angle. They've started at north and they've come anti-clockwise round there and they've said all the way round will be 180 but we take off that 40 and we got 140 degrees absolutely right that angle there is 140 degrees but it's not measuring that bearing clockwise and um, it's worth saying as well another popular wrong answer to this is c uh, which is 40 degrees this is students just having a look and reading that angle and seeing it's 40 degrees. That's wrong for two reasons, of course. It's wrong because you're not measuring the bearing from north, but also it's not been given as three digits. So you've got to be very careful with bearings. Which brings us to the worst answered question. Did you predict this was the worst one? This one, factorize if possible. So we've got the word if possible, which um, allows us D as an option here that it doesn't factorize, but we're gonna have to check each of these. So what does factorize mean? Factorize means put that expression into brackets. So P squared plus 100. Now it could be like this. It could be something on the outside and it could be one bracket, or it could be two brackets. So if it was to be this one bracket, there would need to be a common factor. There'd need to be something in the, the factor I could take out of P squared and a factor I could take out of 100. Well, I can't think of anything there. I could take 10, a factor of 10 out of 100, but I can't take it out of P squared. I could take a factor of P out of P squared, but I can't take it out of 100. So that's not looking good. It's not going to be a one bracket job. So it's going to be a two bracket job, if anything. So now I've got to look, is there any way I can set up these brackets so that when um, that, that it will give me the factorized form of this? Or another way to put it, is there any way I can set up these brackets so that when I multiply out the brackets, I go back to my original question? Because multiplying out brackets is the opposite of factorizing. Well, if it was going to work, it would need to start like that because you'd need to do P multiplied by P to get P squared. I'll tell you one that screams out at me straight away. This looks promising. Look at that. Because you've got P multiplied by P gives you P squared, and you've got 10 multiplied by 10 gives you 100. Is that right? Oh, it's one of our options. But no, wait a minute, because you don't just end up with, you don't just do this. You don't just go P times P is P squared. And you don't just do 10 times 10 is 100. 
you've got some other combinations to worry about here. You've got this one here. You've got your, uh, sorry, <laughs> you've got your P multiplied by your 10. So you've got 10P and you've also got this 10 multiplied by P. So you've got 10P. So actually, if you multiply out those brackets, you get P squared plus 20P plus 100, which isn't the thing that we're after. It's not the thing we're looking for. So A's a goner. A's a goner. What about B? Should we test B, B out? I'm not convinced that because I don't know where this negative sign's coming from. But let, let's just test it out. P plus 10. P subtract 10. Give us a bit of practice multiplying out brackets. P multiplied by P. P squared. P multiplied by negative 10. Negative 10P. Uh, 10 plus P. 10p, 10 multiplied by negative 10, negative 100. So what have I got? I've got a p squared, I've got a negative 100, and I've got negative 10p plus 10p. Well, they're going to cancel each other out, so I've got nothing left. So I've just got p squared, take 100. It's close, but I wanted p squared plus 100, so it's not that. That's not looking good. And finally, I've got this one, p plus 10 all squared. Now, again, that looks promising. Is that just P times P, P squared, 10 times 10, 100? Well, no, because P plus 10 all squared. If you square something, you multiply it by itself. So that's the same as P plus 10 multiplied by P plus 10. And we check before to see that that actually gave us P squared plus 20P plus 100. So that's a goner as well. So our only conclusion is that there's no way of factorizing this. Is that right? Well, yeah, it is, but only 36% of students agreed. You can see the most popular wrong answer here was C. Students thinking, as we discussed, you can just do P squared plus 10 squared, but it's actually two brackets. Likewise, A is popular, students doing that. And again, it's the same thing. It's not realizing that when you multiply out these brackets, you also end up with these two middle terms that give you 10p and 10p, which is where that 20p is going to come from. So be very careful when factorizing, be very careful when expanding. And remember, use the fact that factorizing and, and multiplying out brackets are the opposite of each other. So you can always check one by doing the other. How did you get on with those three questions? I thought they were tough this week, uh, but fear not. Um, if we can discuss them like this, confront them, hopefully we'll be on the path to understanding them. Um, if you want some more of this, if you're a student, if you head to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, you'll find loads of these quizzes. And if you're a teacher and you want to get your students set up on uh, these schemes of work, so the quizzes will be automatically set and marked, it's all completely free. Head over to ed.co.uk, look for the schemes of work. These ones are the revision schemes of work, but there's loads on there. And if you need help getting your students set up or anything like that, drop an email to hello at ed.co.uk. Hope you found that useful. I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care and bye for now.